It's happened again. That great massive shark decided to move home to Paracel Storm. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This was done intentionally by JJJU and his team at Dice LA for the 100th patch to the CTE client for Battlefield 4. And for those of you that didn't know, the Megalodon was originally intended to be activated on Paracel, but for some reason, the Dice Devs decided to put it in Nancha Strike as well. Now that's not the only Easter egg that got added with the latest update, there is one more to be found, and so far JJJU has left no clues as to what that might be, other than the fact that it will be activated during normal gameplay. There's no specific trigger that needs to be completed in order to get the thing to work. So with that in mind, if you've got CTE and you like Easter eggs, get out there, help test the new features and find an Easter egg. That's multitasking at its finest right there. But what I really wanted to do with this video today was to kind of give you an update on Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline at the same time, because I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that I haven't exactly been putting out that many Hardline videos, and I intended to sort of make it the main game on my channel and kind of give Battlefield 4 the back seat, but that hasn't really happened, and there's a good reason for that, which I'll explain right now. Pre-release of Battlefield Hardline was full of many wonderful things, and a fresh new game was coming to us 18 months after the release of Battlefield 4 to carry us over to the next main Battlefield title. It was a breakaway, something a little bit different than what we expected from a normal Battlefield game, but it was exciting. The game got delayed though, and that was to make sure it came out fully functional and incorporated some major fan feedback. The release came, and for me, it was awesomely fun, and then things kind of fell away a little bit. I spent a lot of time at Visceral Studios playtesting this game, and in the environment of 12v12 that we were limited to, because that's pretty much the only people that got invited, a lot of balance issues that we noticed immediately after the main release of the game, like the K10 being stupidly powerful, along with the M16 and the 416, weren't as noticeable in those closed testing environments. Because there were less people using those things, we were all trying out stuff that we hadn't really seen before. Once the game dropped, people noticed these issues and started mentioning them on battle log and in forums and everywhere really. And Visceral were quick to compile a list and they produced it only a couple of weeks after launch. Great, they were continuing their community focused approach to development and making sure that people knew what they were doing to their game in order to make it better. But then, it's taken six weeks for those changes to be implemented. I kind of thought we'd see more from the first patch. I mean, the fixes haven't really done that much to the overpowered weapons to make them less powerful, and the fixes didn't help the stupidly underpowered weapons like the UMP 45 and the M45 which as far as I can tell are just neglected for things like the K10 because they're just so underpowered in comparison to everything else in the game. And something else too, Hardline didn't have any launch DLC as I like to call it. An example of that would be like China Rising for Battlefield 4 or, or Back to Karkin for Battlefield 3. Some of you might not agree here, but I think launch DLC in 2015 makes sense. Gamers expect so much from their titles right now and Without launch DLC, and, and let's be honest, for a game that wasn't hugely well received by the community it was being marketed to, might not have been the best move. We've seen six weeks go past since launch, and in real terms, that's not a huge amount of time. But player numbers have fallen from 300k during peak times, which was, was competing with Battlefield 4, where now only 70,000 people are playing during peak times. And on PC, that number is so low. I mean, servers are completely underpopulated, and there are only about five or six in the European area that I would consider playing on, simply because they've got a big enough play account to make sure the game physically works properly. I mean, the weapon balance doesn't work great with those higher amount of players on the server, so if I'm going to play a game, I want 16v16. And there's only a couple of servers that are offering that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the game right now doesn't have enough going on to keep people playing consistently. It needs an injection of adrenaline from the developers. I said that on Twitter the other day, and a lot of people seem to agree with me. And I'm sure the developers are working hard on the DLC that I think a lot of us are now waiting for. And let me make this clear. 
I'm not bashing on the developers here because I don't think you could meet a greater bunch of guys, and I genuinely mean that. They've tried really hard to make sure this game is something that people want to play without the issues that we've seen in past Battlefield titles, and they executed that almost perfectly for a release. But from my point of view, the updates needed to come faster, the content needed to come faster to make sure people stayed interested. I'm not sure what the future holds for Battlefield Hardline, but by no means does that mean that I'm not paying attention to it. I still play the game pretty much every day, but it's just not something that I'm focusing on on my channel right now because I don't think there's a lot of content to show you guys or to give you a tutorial on something because most of you will have already done all of that anyway. I am excited to see the first DLC pack, Criminal Activity, which is coming sometime in June, and the rumour is it will be towards the end of June, and the Hardline CTE program is starting next month as well, and the developers have already confirmed we will be testing one of the new maps that's coming in that Criminal Activity DLC. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for the future. And for Battlefield 4, well, Dysolate are doing an amazing job to somehow pull this game out of the pits of hell, put a new suit on it, and get it back to work. They're doing awesome things for the community, and right now that's why I'm following this game so closely. They're producing the content that gamers want to see for the game, like constant netcode improvements and balancing tweaks to make sure they find the sweet spot. And let's not forget that the new Weapon Crate DLC is coming, Night Maps are coming, Fan Favorite Maps are coming, the Gun Master Game Mode is coming, and the Community Jungle Map as well. So there is so much content coming for Battlefield 4 that we know about. Perhaps that's why I'm just a little bit more interested, because I've got a solid vision of what's coming in the future. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, if you could hit me up with a like, that'd be fantastic. And don't forget to check out g2a.com slash r slash westy for deals on the latest games. The link's in the description. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.